welcome Hi. <laughs> welcome welcome to our vlog and this is john arbin textiles vlog number 14 now yeah, we're like officially teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting into the swing of the yeah, teenage. Exactly. Yeah. Learning who we are and a bit more about ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Roller coaster of emotions. No, we're always on quite an even keel here. <laughs> but yeah, welcome to our vlog. We've just got a couple kind of bits and bobs of what we've been up to, but um what have you been doing with yourself, Lauren? Oh, well it was my birthday a few weeks ago. And um, I had some nice uh, gardening vouchers off some lovely people here at the mill. Yeah. So I've been planning what I'm going to do with the garden for spring and summer because we have a bit of a blank canvas at our yeah. house at the moment. So yeah, been um, spending some lovely vouchers nice. and doing some digging. And yeah, it's been really good. It's the right time of year to do the digging, isn't it? Keep, this is keeps the, warm, you know, the time warm. for getting the stuff in the soil as well before yeah. it all starts mm -hmm. waking up. Exactly. Yeah. What about you, yeah. Sam? Yeah, I've done a bit in the garden, although we did have other people coming in doing fencing work for us, which was uh, kind of intriguing how mm. they managed to do an entire fence in like two days. It would probably take us like <laughs> an entire year to do it ourselves. But um, yeah, and then I've been pruning the uh, apple trees. Uh, oh, I need it's to that, that time nice. of year to do it. Uh, mm. And also um, I got my potatoes because I think we talked about those we last did. time. Last we? time you said yeah. it was potato day so was coming. So they're all happily chitting. In oh, the... mine are chitting as well. I the know. It's <laughs> a technical word. We love our technical words here. <laughs> all the egg boxes yeah. on the side That's of the exactly windowsill. Or as my husband reversed them, the mouldy potatoes yeah. on the windowsill. <laughs> Probably the most boring thing if you were just sitting watching your potatoes mm. but for the potatoes it's absolutely amazing yeah they it? love it definitely yeah. so getting out when yeah. i can really and you? if you live in another country do let us know what chitting is in your is <laughs> <laughs> when you leave the potato to like sprout yeah that's the word yeah. yeah they kind of sprout and they start like all the roots start coming out don't mm -hmm. they they start looking quite poisonous at that point yeah they i mean they don't look appetizing at all <laughs> they do just <laughs> look like molding potatoes <laughs> <laughs> yeah and what have i been doing i don't know it's been quite it's been sort of like quite gray and a mm. bit meh, so yeah trying to go for walks every time the sun shines just being like oh daylight um have but yeah knitting? i've been doing a lot of knitting actually yeah that is what i there's been a lot of knitting going on i've been making some samples for the annual which is exciting mm. and then i've been doing lots of other personal knitting i've been on a little craft spree mm. yeah Fun. yeah just a lot of sitting on the couch yeah knitting that's coming yeah. yeah 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 exactly yeah. that sort of thing yeah and then what we've been up to at the mill is we've made Lots. some we've made some special things. Yeah. We're so excited about them that we just need to talk about them first. Yes. <laughs> this is this is our pack of squish. Yes. The it official is. name. <laughs> just named it moments before recording the vlog. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so this is our beautiful alpaca blend that we decided we were mm. going to do. So it is um, 40 alpaca and 60% yep. merino. Definitely. We've got two shades, the light and the dark. And Sam's got the top. Yep, if you can imagine. There it all is together, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> we can see Sonia's got her favourite colour yes. and I've got my favourite colour, if you didn't realise. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm the spinner in the room, so yeah. I've got the top. So I'm the spinner. <laughs> <laughs> perfect and we um we thought we'd make um like a slightly thicker yarn that we usually make which is why we've called it squish because mm -hmm. it's it's 176 meters yep. so it's a proper aaron weight mm -hmm. um which we've never done before but it just it feels like it's it'll so be squishy. so good for cables yeah or just a bit of garter mm -hmm. it is yeah it's going to be sure great. It is. I'm taking some home actually to, yeah. to cast on scene for a yeah. project. So, and I can't like, wait. it's because you made it. You designed well, these colours. These are your first. I mean, at the people in the mill blending. made it, but I. That's true. I had a go at blending up some colours, and these are the colours that <laughs> yeah. we had a go with. But yeah. I think they they have turned out really nicely, haven't they? They're absolutely beautiful, and they've got a real kind of warmth to them. But mm -hmm. yeah, should we give folks a little close up of yeah. those shades? And then we've got a lot of other bits and bobs to get into as well. It's a bit of an action-packed vlog. So. Yeah, we've got things to talk about 
like the mill open weekend. We're gonna yeah. have a chat about that. Yeah. Sam has got something to show and that I, you've made. I've made, made stuff. a thing. Who'd have thought? <laughs> I should start bringing the things I make in, yeah. really, shouldn't I? <laughs> And then we got the mill membership. Yep. We got a new yeah. mill, mill, mill membership. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. We were yep. wearing our badges. badges. Yeah. So we can tell you about that. Yeah. And a bit and of Knit by Numbers. Yes. News. If you're watching this, you might have already realised that the Knit by Numbers has gone uh, on sale and we're changing the base. But we'll tell you a bit more about that and give you a close up of the colours as well. Yeah. So without further ado, let's, let's start with the old squish. The new squish, even. <laughs> <laughs> so here we've got a bit of a close-up of the two shades. And obviously you can see you've got the light and the dark. And this is what they both look like before they're spun into yarn, which is a bit crazy, isn't it? That they can look a bit like this with all the different colours. And then when it all does get spun up, it looks like this. Yeah. And then... Um, I mean, you can just about see the colours that are in here and in here and in this one as well if you look really close at the yarn um, yeah you can really see the lovely. sort of color pops of the red and the blue um, which is really nice and when I was thinking about what we might like to do with the alpaca we were thinking that we would be inspired by um, two of the colors in our yarnadelic range which is black gold of the sun and beautiful ones um, so a light and a dark there with a sort of light or a dark base and the colour pops that you can sort of see in those little mini skeins as well. Um, so that was sort of a base when we were beginning talks about this yarn. And then we decided to go a little bit more pink and a little bit more brown, which we do love. Would you like to show us those two next to each other? So if you pop the beautiful ones next to our pale squish. Bit of squish bit of squish so they're both a bit warmer aren't they they are yeah but beautiful i know and i am a pink girl so so it had to be a pink it, it really when you were pink. making it yeah <laughs> we are a pink crew around here there's a lot of pink going on <laughs> so here i am through the magic of editing popping up uh, about a week or so after the last section of the vlog was recorded. And that's because I've made something. Uh, it's very exciting. I'm very excited. There's nothing like a brand new uh, finished project, is there? Um, and this one is very lovely, I think. <laughs> and it's in our new alpaca squish. So that's why I wanted to kind of show it to you. It's a lovely cozy cow. Let me lift it up so you can see how big it is. Um, and I have done it in this like kind of broken rib pattern with a bit of um, like standard rib as well. And it's a really nice generous size and it uses about one and a half, just under two skeins of, um, of the dark color. So I'll give you a little close up as well, but I just thought being as I'd finished it, it would be nice to kind of show all you folks at home um, how our pack of squish knits up because it is lovely stuff. Um, yeah, it's very beautiful. So if you're thinking what to make, I'd say two will make you like a lovely giant cow without a doubt with some leftover. Um, and for anyone admiring the pattern, um, that's very kind of you. Um, it is just my own design. It's the first thing I've designed in absolutely donkeys, so I'm quite chuffed with it. Um, but I obviously have only just finished it. It's hot off the needles. So um, at some point, kind of later in the year, um, it will emerge, no doubt. But yeah, I just wanted to show it to you folks quickly. One of the other things that we've been up to recently is we are in the middle of, well, we're at the beginning of changing all of this amazing yarn um, behind me. So um, if you found your way to our vlog, you're probably quite acquainted with our Knit by Numbers range. Um, there's 121 colours in both DK, which I'm pointing out because it's over here, and then the four plies behind me. And we have it in 100 gram skeins and mini skeins. And um, 
one of our big exercises for the next foreseeable future, at least probably eight, 12 months, is we're swapping all of it from being 100% Merino, which is what it is at the moment, to being 50% BFL, 50% Merino. So the reason that Helena and I wanted to kind of make that change is because um, one of the reasons we wanted to have a mill is because we really believe in kind of buying local and using local fibre. So the BFL comes from the UK. The Merino we buy um, from organic farms on the Falklands. So it's still really lovely stuff and good animal welfare practices. But um, we just thought it would be nicer for it to be a bit closer to home. And um then BFL has got many lovely qualities, which I think I espoused upon in the last vlog. So <laughs> shan't bang the BFL drum too hard this time. But it's um it's the softest British breed and it's a long wool, so it's really nice and drapey and it's got a good sheen to it. So subbing this blend is also just gonna make it um, a little bit drapier and a little bit more durable and a little bit shinier. So Merino is a gorgeous fiber, but it's got what they call like quite a square staple length. So it can be quite bulky and it really kind of goes poof, um, which is wonderful for some things, but um, it just, yeah, it's not necessarily the drapiest fiber unless it's been superwash treated, so um, which we don't do with most of our yarns. So yeah, long story short, we think it'll be an improvement. Um, it won't be quite as soft, but it'll definitely still be like next to skin soft. But we know that there's a huge amount of Merino fans out there, and rightly so, it's an absolutely gorgeous fibre. Um, I think part of the reason as well that we're changing it is just because there's so much 100% Merino out there. So we wanted to make something that was a little bit more unique. But um, if you're a 100% Merino fan, like I definitely am, um, then what we have done is we've reduced all of this amazing yarn to be 30% off while we transition. And that's just to help us kind of run through our stocks a little quicker. So um, yeah, all of the knit by numbers is now 30% off for the 100% Merino version. Um, so I wouldn't get too crazy because I think it'll take us a good half a year to get through it all, don't worry. Um, but there will be some on the website. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll just kind of keep tip topping it up. There's a lot of colours to keep track of. So um, we're kind of putting the putting the stock on there a little bit at a time. But um, yeah, we hope it'll allow you to grab a nice bargain. And then Lauren and I will just give you a little close up of um, what all these colours look like, because there's quite a lot to choose from. <laughs> So this is a close up of our full knit by numbers color palette and um, we've got 121 shades in the range. So I think if you pick the middle ones. Yeah, this is like the sort of mid tone of all the different gradients that we do. Mm. Um, Obviously, we do quite a few. <laughs> Just a couple. This is why it's such a head scratch. <laughs> I'm not really allowed near it because I get my number order muddled round. And so uh, you have to be a, a very kind of <laughs> very maths oriented to be able to stock check knit by numbers. It's a special skill. I bet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there um, really is kind of like something for whatever project that you're after here. Oh, isn't there? definitely. Like, from these really numbers. nice kind of poppy brush to then things that are more my jam like the earth tones this teal tealy turquoise is a really nice popular one as well so whether you prefer a color palette that's more like strong colors or like softer more muted ones I think like you said Lauren we definitely just got a little bit of all of them mm -hmm. or a lot of bit of all of them yeah <laughs> um so this yarn, as we said, is on sale at the moment, and that's because we're changing the blend. So in a couple of months, we'll get the new blend coming in, and that will not be on sale. But while we've got the 100% um, Merino, just to help us kind of run through our remaining stocks, we decided to reduce it and to give you folks a bargain. So um, this is all of the 
kind of base shades available. And then I think we'll also give you a little close up of just one of those gradients. And I think we're going for this one here, which, which is, is sort of our coppery shades as yeah. well. Yeah, it's one of our faves. So, you know, we're the ones doing the filming. We're showing off our fave. <laughs> <laughs> So here we've got a full gradient from dark to light. And as we said, we picked the copper. And um, the way we get the colors is we start with um, gill boxes have got six ends. So you're always combining six ends. And the top one is six ends of dyed. And the palest one is one end of dyed yarn or dyed fiber and five ends of white. And then, you know, so each one will sub out a dyed end for a pale end so I think the consensus was that um this is a hundred percent dyed 66 percent 33 percent and then there's some there's some other percentages in the middle it's very technical <laughs> <laughs> but it makes this beautiful like very subtle gradient in front of us here so we've seen some really interesting patterns recently where they've used a full gradient mm. um of, of the knit by numbers and it does look really cool when you yeah. see it all in like an ombre effect isn't it definitely or you can do things like um phase loft for instance well like you can get things where if you've got a couple of these striping and then you can add in a bit of a pop from another palette but it just gives you like an instant color palette mm -hmm. if you're using two from the same tone and then you can go for a contrast and you just know that they're going to kind of work together easily. So, yeah, there's definitely some useful tips and tricks for using our knit by numbers. But there it is. What have you got there, Sam? So, wow, this is something that I've been working on. It's something that I've sort of worked on since, well, just after I started working here, I think, isn't it? So we wanted to update the mill membership package. Um, and we decided to design our own nice little folder and badge and certificate. So this is so anyone who hasn't become a member yet, no. this is your opportunity yes. to see what you get if you become <laughs> <Yes>. a member. <laughs> and um, and so it's a lovely little brown, very understated but very kind of neat um, mm. outer package with then the certificate in the middle, some information about the mill and how to access the special things that you get as a mill member, because you do get special things. And then a lovely mill membership certificate, which will have your name and a number and everything on there. And then inside, we've got a nice little shiny M for yeah. a mill member, which special corresponds tree. with the badge on the front which we're all sporting you get your own enamel yeah. badge these days and um anyone who is already a male member you can actually you can you can get a badge yeah and if yeah. so if you're coming to a show this year that's probably the best time to come up and say oh yeah. male member please go have a badge yeah um, or in that, on the in that website. voice obviously <laughs> If you want to say it in that voice, please feel free. Don't we don't mind. Um, you might feel sad. Yeah, yeah, That's a sad yeah, voice because yeah, you don't have a badge. Because yeah, because yeah. I'm a mill member, and when it when it came to, I was like, can I have a badge because I am a mill member? It's like, yes, of course you can. So yeah. if you feel like you're being deprived of a lovely new badge, then please come and see us. Yeah, or contact us. Just get one. one. They'll be up one, on the website. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and if you are thinking. What are these two talking about? What is a mill member? Yeah. It's a bloody bargain is what being a mill member is. Um, so for a one-time fee, which is currently £45, but does fluctuate um, a little, um, you get lifetime 10% off, which is pretty good going, mm. really. Yep. Um, and that's that show's and on the web mm. so you or know on or on the phone yeah however if you, you like to buy us, your yarn you or your fiber yeah. um i think it applies to pretty much everything apart from discounted things. yes and gift vouchers because yeah. that would be silly but yeah you get lifetime 10 percent discount and then also quite a lot of the time we make special treats yes that yeah. are just for mill members yeah. Um, like especially we work with hand dyers a fair bit. We've got one coming soon, a hand dyer collab. Um, and you can only get it if you're a mill member. Otherwise, you just have to 
be sad. Yeah. Or you have to get a job with us. That's the only exception. (laughs) (laughs) We'll have a lot of people sending CVs in now. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah no, I recommend it I say I was a member before I became part of the mill folk mm. and um, you know I took advantage of the discount at shows and online um, and all the specials was very very nice having yeah. that kind of additional sort of heads up on things and sometimes yeah. we release things in advance of them going live so I think things like the Exmoor sock was available to our mill members before it went on general yeah. sale and other things like that so you know yeah. it is worth it if you yes, buy from us a lot as well Definitely. I would recommend it because it'll save you a little bit of money but yeah. um, also it's nice to be part of the mill yeah well nice yeah. to be part of the mill folk mm. the mill team definitely well, I know a fold as yeah. we say a lot of international folks get it because that extra 10% kind of cancels out the extra mm. shipping a lot of the time. So, uh, yeah, it's just our little way of saying, you know, cheers for supporting us. Yeah. 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 <laughs> because we do appreciate you. Of course we do. Yeah. Wouldn't wouldn't work without any of you lot. <laughs> <laughs> So then the other thing that we've been up to is we've been planning our mill open weekend. Yeah. Been a lot of planning. A lot of planning. There's so much planning. It's unbelievable. But yeah, it's going to be really good though. It is. Yeah. And that's going to be the 16th to the 18th of June this year. Yes. Put it in your calendars. And we've got a great, really great lineup of people yeah, come in and lo- loads of different tours and classes and talks. Yeah. So we're going to tell you a little bit about the classes today. 100%. I think it's going to be our best one yet. It's like, I'm really excited about it. You've done such a good job of picking all the picking all the things for people to do. And there's like a little bit of everything with the classes, which is nice. We've tried, haven't we, to get a, yeah. a range of different things for people to do, whether you're into spinning or knitting or crochet mm. Or other crafts, you know, we've got something that yeah. we can, you know, for beginners as well, or 100%. people who are a bit more advanced. So, yeah. yeah, it should be really fun. It's all fibre related, though, yeah. isn't it? So I think one of the things I'd like to do is there's beginner spinning with amazing Amanda Hannaford. Beginner that popular spinning. <laughs> always, always. Um, yeah. So that would be good. I might try and sneak off to that. It's yeah. not going to happen. I've never tried drop spindle either. So. We both need it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Amanda's also here to do fancy yarns as well for people who are a little bit more um, proficient with their spinning. Yeah. If you don't need the beginner spinning class. <laughs> yeah. And then we've also got um, Kate Eldridge coming. She's a local craftsperson and teacher and she's going to do some needle felting with the cutest little needle felt yeah. sheep with some long wool locks. Uh, that's going to be really exciting definitely um, and needle yeah. felting is quite a good one for like working your aggression out have you done any no. needle felting oh it's great <laughs> you get this like um like a needle derp, yeah. and it's got little spikes on it and you just kind of stab at the wool and then you stab away and after a while it starts like forming this it starts felting felting right. would you believe it <laughs> <laughs> um but it's an amazing technique it's really good to try yeah and it's a good one if you're feeling a bit stressed because you're just like rah, 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 rah. and then you've made yourself we might need that on the day who knows we might <laughs> <laughs> but that's a lovely thing i do it sometimes for like christmas presents nice. a needle felting people christmas ornaments <laughs> sounds really good we've got um some visible mending which yes. is something i think would be really interesting as Definitely. well um with uh molly who's another local um artisan craftsperson yeah, who's an expert sure. um so she's there to show us how to do some great visible mending but also she'll be able to help you know, if you're on the class, you'll be able to help you out with some advice if you've yeah. got your own projects that you, you need to have a little bit of a mending so, session if with. If you've ripped your favourite <laughs> pair of jeans and it's broken your heart, bring them along. Molly will help you. Molly will help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, Sylvia um, what is coming. Yeah, um, definitely. And she's got a, um amazing Intarsia workshop. Yeah. She's also going to be doing a talk, but yeah, um, yeah the workshop is to make a really beautiful intarsia cowl in the round and mm. we've got some lovely um, mini skeins included in the workshop for yeah. people to use for that as well yeah and i've never done intarsia in the round i've done no. a bit of like back and forth intarsia i can't even conceive of how one might do it in the round so that's going to be another really interesting class i think yeah you know? and she is sort of the intarsia queen isn't she, she really is yeah. yeah so it'll be a real treat to have sylvia definitely yeah. 
And then we've um, we've got Alex Bird. She's going to be coming to do some other beautiful techniques. She's got um, Estonian Rusamine um, yeah. as her technique that she's going to be teaching at our class, mm. um, which is going to be really cool. Yeah, I've seen her do a few of her workshops before, and she, they do look amazing. Yeah, and Rusamine, I think it's a bit like colour work, but it's sort of like intarsia colour work, isn't it? So like it's sort of like a... elements as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah, so that's going to be fun. Again, we don't really know how that works either. Well, we've basically just booked. <laughs> we'd like to go on all of them, really, wouldn't we? I think we need to. <laughs> we've booked all the workshops that we'd like to go to, but in actual fact, we have to be at the open weekend. Oh, so we do uh, sort of need to get. Make, you'll need you know, to go to, to their them. Classes, <laughs> exactly, suppose, but... but go to them for us and then tell us about them. Yeah, <laughs> please do. Um, and then, yeah, then we've got our crochet class um, with Liz from the Loom Shed, who's mm -hmm. another local local teacher, and she's fab and has come up with a beautiful pattern for a ombre uh, cowl using a really interesting harlequin <laughs> harlequin <laughs> stitch in crochet. Uh, so that's going to be amazing, yeah. and it does look so cool with all the different gradients of the knit by numbers. Mm, definitely, um, yeah, and it's so a, that'll be a really good class as well. It's like a lovely sculptural, textural kind of crochet project, isn't it? And it you get is. to make a cowl again. So. I think as well, if you, it's a, the class for people who are they know their granny squares. They're you know they know the basics mm. and they're looking for something a little bit more interesting. Yeah, I think definitely. And I, the other thing that's really nice about all the classes this year is they all come with materials. So whether yeah. it's the needle felting or the visible mending or the crochet, you'll actually then get to. So if you do the visible felting, you get to keep like a hoop and some threads so we're kind of giving you the materials for the class but also then to kind of take it away and practice yeah, afterwards exactly. so if you do the drop spindle one you get a drop spindle so it's not just like try this and then we'll take it away from you so yeah yeah, yeah. So they will be really lovely, I think, the classes. They will, yeah. And as you said, we've got some mill tours. If you've never seen the mill before, come or if tour. you have, come again. Yeah. Come and see all the machines <laughs> and meet them all. Mm. We've got some amazing talks, which we'll talk about next time. time. Yeah. And obviously some good food and drinks. And yeah, Definitely. it'll just be a really, really fun weekend. It will. It'll yeah. be a treat. It was a real treat last year, but it'll be more of a treat this time. Yeah. Because we will have done it once already <laughs> <laughs> we've had some more practice yep. this year right exactly <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we're really looking forward to you coming and as lauren said it's so sort of action-packed and stuffed that we can't actually tell you about all of it this time so yeah. we've got to leave something for next time yeah we? <laughs> so those are the classes and what are the dates again lauren it's the 16th <laughs> to the 18th of june this year <laughs> and we're also having a virtual one which is think. in july yeah. Um, and I think that is the 9th and 10th, or it's the 8th and the 9th. Um, what I will do is ask Luke, who edits the videos, to flash a little correction for what the real dates are. But we are having a virtual one again in July as well. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's still sort of being organised with mm. who's going to be there and what we're exactly doing. But yeah. it, it will be really fun as well, because last year's was, was great. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so if you are too far away or you're not able to visit, you can always come to the virtual one and we'll have yeah. all the same goodies at that too. And now Laura's going to tell you about yet another machine at the mill. Hello, welcome to the mill. Today I'm going to show you one of our lovely vintage machines. This is James Henry. He's a roving frame. Today I'm working on a commission spin job for the lovely Beth at Telling Yarns. This uh, fibre is a mixture of uh, blue faced Leicester, Masham, Romney and a little dash of Zwart Balls. Oh, it's lovely. very lovely. Um, and so we're spinning up a, a DK weight and a four ply weight for Beth and then she's going to do her amazing dye amazingness uh, and turn it into incredible new yarns. Uh, so, James Henry is fed from these thick rovings. So that's thick roving. It's been made on another machine called Drusilla. Um, and you can just see, because with the Zwart balls, you can just see, oh, pardon my dirty fingernails. I've been working on the machines all day. Yeah, you, <laughs> you work in the mill, it's loud. <laughs> uh, so you can just see it's got a little bit of twist. You can see the fibres going like that. Um, and that allows me to handle it so I can give this a little tug and it won't break. But if I 
just give that a little unspin, they straighten out and I can pull it apart. And that's what the machine's gonna do to draft it to the new weight that we want. So I thought I'd show you. This started off as tops like this. So it's lovely thick stuff, not spun at all. You can see the fibers are just going straight Beautiful. down like that. And that's been through a draw box uh, which is kind of another roving machine, and that's made this lovely, thick roving for us. Um, and then I'm going to show you how I set this up, and then it's going to turn into this, is when I prepared earlier. Uh, and this is, you can see it's just a thinner roving. Again, it's still got that little bit of twist. Has it got a bit extra twist? Uh, no, not too much, because you still need it to be able to... Uh, undo itself on the next machine. If you put uh, too course. much in um, on the next machine, which is a spinning machine, um, it won't be able to um, sort of open up that twist to so draft it. So you get very thick singles then. We'd end up I think with like it, a serious chunky. <laughs> I think it wouldn't spin at all and we'd be in trouble. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it would sort of get all stuck on the machine. Uh, so let me show you how we set this up because at the moment this is just a, a mix of rollers and you can't really tell what's going on so i'm going to set one end uh on uh i won't show you the whole thing because that takes me about 25 minutes <laughs> just do one <laughs> so i take two one from the front and one from the back oh that feels like countdown um i take two together um and this is uh, uh doubling so this allows us to sort of even out any little imperfections we do this throughout the system I pop these, the left one into the left hook and the right one into the right hook, like that, still holding on. If I let go, they'll untwist themselves, so I just sort of keep a little grip on them. I'm gonna go over this top roller and tuck it through that gap there. Now, uh, I'm gonna inch the machine a little bit, so it'll just run a little teeny bit. I'm not going to trap my own thumb in here. Health and safety. But I will hold my thumb there. So just, it's not noisy, it's just a little blip. There we go. So then that has now caught itself in there and I've got enough round the back. So I bring that little bit through. So we've gone over and round the first roller. We've gone round the back. It might be difficult for you to see the second roller. I've just, I've got hold of that little front bit and I'm gonna inch the machine again. And that'll pull it through that next bit. I'm going to reach through Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There it is. So this comes through and now it's going to come under these two wooden things called amblers. They're very nice they looking. Are. Do you know, this one here is my favourite bit of the mill because of these marks. I don't know how it got these marks. There's lovely old wood and it just looks like someone's drawn a nice sort of little flowery pattern on it so I love seeing that every day put that back in so I'm going to lift both of them up there's a thicker one on top and a thinner one on the bottom so I need to keep them the right way around and that just pops in between there and then there's metal ones yeah the metal underneath ones the underneath ones. and these ones on top and they sort of roll and they just keep um a light pressure on the fiber as it comes through so between the rollers we've just been through and the one we're about to get to, that's where it's drafting the fibre, sort of um, teasing it apart and uh, thinning it out, ready for spinning. Um, and if we didn't have these amblers sat on top, um, it would, you can see it sort of already just kind of wants to fluff out. We want to just control it between these two points because um, that's important for the spinning. We pop those back on top. Lovely. That's quite a nice little point ready to go in there. So I'm going to blip the machine again, inch it forward, and that little end will come through these next two rollers, uh, which is the second draft, the final pressure roller, and it'll start to pop out here. Ready? Ready, ready. There it there is. There we go. Oh, it sounds very, when there's not a f fibre in all of them, they sound a bit rattly. So I've got a little bit here. Uh, the next thing it needs to do is come through this flyer arm and onto these lovely green bobbins. 
Um, so I need enough for it to follow that whole route. So I'm going to just put a little bit of twist in by uh, with my fingers and that allows me again like before to handle it so I can give a little tug on that and I'm not going to break it. So I'm going to inch that forward again, there's a lot of inching, so that I get enough to run through the next bit. Here we go. <laughs> So I very carefully have to move away as it comes out. You've got a big bit there, yeah. Laura. Yeah, I need about that much. Um, so I had to just carefully pull that away. Otherwise, if I sort of let it go, it would have got caught in the arms. So you have to just carefully pull it without yanking it. Give it another twist with my hands to make it handleable again. So again, you can see I can just put a little bit of tension on that. And now use the special hook. It's very high tech. Very high tech. Is that a bit of a clothes hanger? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's just a, a random bit of wire that is just the right shape. And we've made a little hook so that we can go up in there. And I catch this in here, pull it down. It's a bit like threading a sewing machine. You have to go through all these different little hoops. Down this, through that one there. And there we go done with the hook thank you very much um, good work hook so this is a flyer arm we've come uh, in through the shoulder we're going to go round the back of the flyer arm and this thing is called a twizzle which is quite fun is that the official term it is i read it in the book it's a twizzle <laughs> you pop into there there we go and then i'm going to go with this anti-clockwise around the bobbin and then it just grips onto itself and it's ready to go. Amazing, thank so I can, you. I can run that for a few seconds uh, just so you see what it's like. Ready? Thank you. There we go, so you can see from where I started it, um, it's filling the bobbin slowly by actually by this plate moving up slowly and then when it gets to there of course moves down slowly to just evenly fill the bobbin up and down and I set a counter um, on the machine so that um, I will fill it with just the right amount that I want so that the 33 kilos up here will be nicely transferred onto the next machine. Amazing. And do you want a little sneaky peek at what it does next? Why not? <laughs> Why not? So we take those nice green bobbins and we pop them onto this machine. This is Butler. He is our smaller spinner. So you can see these thin rovings that we've just made. They come down here and they're a bit like James Henry. They follow a path round a roller, behind a roller. It's got its own little ambler, just keeping that little bit of pressure on it and it's drafted between this point and this point, and then it turns into a single ply. So small, you can't actually see the twist in that one. Um, Lovely. And then this one fills up these bobbins, uh, not bobbins, sorry, tubes, uh, but instead of going like the green ones, it goes all the way down and all the way up. This one fills up differently. It, it goes sort of down and up and down and up and slowly sort of comes up so you get this nice even fill, um, which is then uh, taken upstairs for finishing. Amazing. And then once it's been plied, mm -hmm. it goes off to Beth. Yeah. And she works her magic on it. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Got a one and a half machine little look at what goes on in the mill. Great. Thanks so much, Laura. Thanks. See you later. Bye. Bye. So I've got Donna here with me today. Hello. And you've definitely been on a vlog before, but not for a while. Quite a lot, yes, a long time ago. Yeah. I think it was with um, Emily before. Oh, yeah. A candy sweater. Yeah, that is yeah. a while yeah, back. Yeah, it was a long time ago, yeah. Well, yes. welcome. Thank welcome. you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for returning. That's okay. You persuaded me to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't scare me away. No. Yeah. Um, you might not have been on the vlog, but you are here pretty much every day. I'm here all the time. <laughs> um, so for anyone who's um, emailed us, 
or placed an order, probably Donna will be very familiar to you. Yes, I'm answering everyone's emails and organising your packing of your orders. Yeah. Yes, doing you're in all charge that. of packing land. Yeah, I'm you? here. Yeah. For your sins. For my sins, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No peace of the wicked, as they say. No, no. <laughs> and you've got um, you've got a real menagerie of wildlife in your house. As I well, have, don't you? Yes, yeah. We have two Cooney Cooney pigs, um, who are just pets, and they're lovely. I have three ferrets now, and they're really cute as well. Two cats and one dog. Amazing. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. One very elderly cat. She's at eighteen next month. Oh. She's lovely, yeah. And a very fluffy dog. I have a Leon Burger dog who's amazing. Up to here? Yeah, big and fluffy <laughs> and gorgeous and thinks she's just a puppy. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Yep. Um, and yeah, what have you been kind of the main thing that we've all been doing behind the scenes here is the knit by numbers. Knit by numbers, yes, yes. I am dreaming knit by numbers. <laughs> We've got a lot going on with the Knit by Numbers. Everybody has gone mad for Knit by Numbers. Yeah. You all want to get, yep, yeah, we're doing lots of stock checking and skeining and packing so many orders. And hopefully we're getting them all out gradually. They're, yeah. they're all hitting everywhere. <laughs> Definitely. So, yeah. So we are just a small team here. So it's wonderful that, uh, yeah, you're also excited by the reduced knit by numbers, but uh, thank you also for your patience. Yes, it's very much appreciated. <laughs> thank you. And if there's anything that goes out of stock, we do apologize, but uh, we can normally find you something else to, to replace it as mm. well. So. Yeah, a lot of the colors are quite similar. So they are. Yeah. That's a blessing. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. nicely, but definitely. Yeah. And I don't think <coughs> we've mentioned it yet, actually. So for anyone going, what are they talking about? Um, we are changing the blend of our knit by numbers to be 50% blue face Leicester and 50% merino rather than the kind of current version is 100% merino. Yeah. So we've put all of the remaining 100% merino on sale, yes. which is why uh, everyone's been enthusiastically ordering it. Yes, it's, it's amazing <laughs> to see how much has been bought and we're selling and yeah, it's really, really good actually. Yeah. Yeah. We've got rather a lot left still as yeah, well though, so there are no lots of sun colours left yeah. <laughs> keep, keep looking we're regularly Definitely. updating the website with yeah. the stock so keep looking yeah. and if something is out of stock if you sign up um, you can on the on the web page you can have an email if a particular colour does come back into stock yeah. so that's always a, a really good thing to do but the reason that I have dragged you on the vlog is because you are I think you're the person who at least in the mill. I know there's folks out there who've bought some. So presumably it's not necessarily the first ever <laughs> item <laughs> to be made yeah, yeah. I can't in unit not, by yeah. numbers, but it definitely is that we've seen. So this is it. Yes. Tell us about your cowl. It's absolutely glorious. So this is in the new blend, the natural color, which is the, the only one that we have at the moment. We've not started doing the dyeing yet. Um, this is a Kate Davies design. It's called Gruggle. Very, very <laughs> lovely name. It's I couldn't remember it earlier. Name, it? <laughs> but it's a superb, superb pattern. It's lots of lovely texture and, mm. and it's nice and soft as well on your neck. Yeah, so. and that's the new 50% BFL. That's 50 the new blend. Yeah. yeah, that's the new one. So it's lovely. And the colour's really nice actually. It's a little bit more creamy mm. than the 100% merino, but it is, yeah, it's really, really nice. Lovely. So, yeah. And have you, you've got more show and tell as well, I have, don't yes, you? yes, yeah, I have. So we'll give folks a little close up of this and then you can show us what else you've been up to as well, Donna, right. now that you're here. <laughs> right, it's very little at the moment, but this will be, I've got to get it around the right way actually, there we are. This will be a Winter's Beach Cardi by Andrew Mori. Um, this is in our Yarnadelic Worsted Baddy Dar colour. And it's lovely. It's, it's um, it very gorgeous. soft and it's quite shiny as well. It's really nice. You've only started this a couple of weeks back as well. So you're making some serious progress. Two, 294 stitches That's because it has to be a big size for me, but it's lovely. Yeah, I'm really enjoying doing this. So if you have not used our yarn Adelie Worsted yet, I would recommend it. It's a lovely yarn. 
And um, it's your Wonder Wall. Yes, this so. is like my Rhinebeck sweater, but it's going to be my Wonder Wall sweater. So <laughs> I'm on a bit of a mission now to get yeah. this one done. So. so if you're planning to come to Wonder Wall, <laughs> that can be one of the... I might just be wearing it like this. <laughs> <laughs> one of the elements of surprise will be... Yeah. Did Donna finish Did Donna the party? Donna. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, hopefully I will be wearing this to Wonderwall and it will be a cardigan rather than just a scarf, Yeah, <laughs> as you suggested. I want it to be a cardigan. It, it'll so. be amazing, Cardi. Yeah, I think it will be. Yeah, but definitely. Yeah, so that's but, what I'm doing Yeah, at the moment. Lovely. So. Well, thanks so much for showing us. No, and, thank you. Uh, you know, I'd say it's a pleasure to see you, but I see you most days, so yes. or at least most weeks. <laughs> most weeks when you pop in, <laughs> when I come, when you come and visit. <laughs> yes, but uh, no doubt everyone who uh, emails you will probably, probably have know. see your face. Hello, yes, <laughs> put a face to the name. Exactly. So, yeah, thank you. It's lovely talking to everybody as well. It's really nice having that communication, talking to you on the phone and, and emails, and hopefully we'll see you at Wonderwall and uh, the open weekend yeah. as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I might drag you back on again at some point. Oh, but yeah, I'd love you to come back. Yeah, <laughs> come and chat. Yeah, great. Right. Thank you. Cheers, Donna. Bye bye. Well, here's a bit of a show and tell. Um, after the sock samples that you may have seen in the last video, um, I basically just had to go a bit mad with the Exmoor sock and I really loved the fuzz pig uh, so I wanted something to do with it and I found this wonderful pattern that's called Nordwand by Birgit Grunwald and they're a fantastic mitten pattern if you haven't worked out what they are yet. I, I posted these several times um, for the mill folk to try and work out while I was making them and nobody could work it out. Um, so they're a, they're a, a mitten I'll show you how that works. There it is. Very, very funky kind of design. Um, you basically start at the top and work your way down in sort of squares and increases. Um, and then a nice bit of kitchener up the end. So if you want to try out your kitchener stitch, this is a great one to sort of work it out on. They're a funky and fun little pattern. And I think they work really, really nicely with these colors. So we've got fuzz pig, which is this one. And then the green is the Aggie. They're probably two of my favorite colors. And then with a bit of mizzle in the middle to do the nice bit of color work. So nice introduction to a little bit of color work, increases and a funky mitten. Who doesn't like a funky mitten? I mean, only heathens, surely. Everyone loves a funky mitten. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's been a bit of a whirlwind. We've got a lot going on at the minute, yeah. it feels like. but Lots of fun news with Hell You and yeah, it's been a busy few weeks, hasn't it? It has with been both, a busy few um, weeks. Working yeah. on some new projects and in packing land at the mill. It's been yeah. very hectic as yeah. well, but all good fun. Yeah, and then we also had a bit of annual news, mm -hmm. which is the test knit has started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's all it's plugging all along behind the scenes. Yeah, so lots of stuff exactly. going on all the things going on mm. but that's all right we like keeping busy yeah um but yeah we hope that wherever you are you're keeping busy as well or Tell not us what you've been doing yeah. we, we always like to hear definitely let us know what you've been doing whether it's chitting your potatoes <laughs> or knitting. you know knitting, knitting your potatoes, your potatoes. <laughs> hey all right <laughs> <laughs> if you are knitting potatoes please do show us i don't yeah. think i've ever seen a knitting know, potato I can't say you I have make either. one out of potato starch i mean you make sort of plastics out of yeah. it yeah that's <laughs> really there must be someone that makes it i mean they make it out of just about everything else so <laughs> they, they so. really do so if you've got any news on that definitely write in i don't think we'll be going that way in the mill though no, no, no. Potato starch I, in, in I think the, the, the machines wouldn't like no. it. No. They don't even like like linen or bamboo no. or anything. So potatoes would be a bridge too far for them. Fair enough. <laughs> Helena would be sad if we tried to do that. Yeah. I think Phil would be mad if we tried to put potatoes in there. Yeah, that's worse than trying to make something that's eighty percent alpaca. Trying to put a potato in a yarn, definitely. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah. enough of our silly wittering. We <laughs> wish you all the best. I hope you've had a nice time with us. Because yeah. <laughs> those of you who are still with us, well done. You're the ones who deserve a prize, really. <laughs> Definitely. And, um, yeah, we'll see you again soon. <laughs> see you next time. <laughs>
Bye. Bye. <laughs>